We're going to discuss today multicollinearity. We're going to say we're going to discuss what it means, uh, how to uh, detect for multicollinearity, and we're going to see some example. And in the next part of the lecture, we will talk about model selection. So let's start with the first topic in uh, today's lecture. So multicollinearity, what does it mean? Uh, if you remember, the classical linear regression model assumes that there should be no exact linear relationship among the among the explanatory variables, and uh, here we can have two uh, uh, cases where we may have perfect multicollinearity when you have exact relationship amongst the x's or the independent variable and it might not be uh, very common in practice but one of the examples that we referred to before is the case when you have uh, g of uh, when you include dummy variables where you have uh, g groups that's the number of groups and you include g dummies so we explain and in the and the 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 constant or the intercept in the same time and we explain on that point that why there will be a perfect multicollinearity and we explain the uh, rule of thumb that if you have uh, g is the number of your groups then uh, the number of dummies uh, could be included in the uh, the the model should be g minus ones and that one or the excluded group or the the group that you exclude or the dummy that you omit that will be the reference group the base group or the benchmark group so that's what you compare with um, so that's one case the other case is the imperfect uh, multicollinearity and uh, in this case, the explanatory variables are highly correlated, and as I said, this is going to be kind of a matter of degree, and this is a very typical uh, case with the uh, macroeconomic time series data. So let's give you some example here. So let's assume that uh, this is the model we're looking at here, where y is a dependent variable and uh, y depends on x2 and x3 and here is the sample we have uh, for x2 and x3 well from the uh, first time you look at the model probably you think that we have two variables here uh, that explain the variation in in, in y and uh, in fact they, they are there are actually only one there's only one variable because if you look carefully at um, x2 and x3 you'll see if you multiply each value in x uh, 2 by 2 you will obtain x3 so uh, x3 equal to x2 so that is a typical case where you have um, exact linear um, uh, relationship or x2 is an exact linear function of x3 and that's why they are perfectly uh, collinear so in that case that's that's show you the case where we have multicollinearity or perfect multicollinearity but the question here what is the problem so let me uh, let me explain you what are the consequences here if you have perfect multicollinearity so again let's now generalize the the case where we have uh, x3 uh, equal lambda lambda could be 2 3 could be whatever x2 uh, and now that means every variation uh, whenever x2 change uh, there will be a change in x3 uh, so and it will be very difficult to distinguish or to um, to to, to uh, separate the independent influences of the two on on y and you can actually uh, substitute in that equation uh, and you can have uh, x2 or you can have a new uh, parameter here or a new uh, coefficient for x2 which is beta 4 and beta 4 in that case would be beta 2 plus lambda beta 3 so that's why it is not possible to use LLS to uh, obtain the uh, impact of x3 on y and the impact of x2 on y uh, like separately so what you could have rather what you could have here is beta 4 and beta 4 in that case is the combined impact of both and and as I explained that's why you uh, it is very difficult to um to get these uh two impact separately and here's the case then um you could estimate beta 4, but you cannot decompose, decompose this to uh, beta 2 and uh, beta 3. So then you cannot estimate that model using uh, OLS, but you can estimate that model which will include beta 4 x2 uh, using OLS. So what you're going to have here is the summation of beta 4, not beta 3 or beta uh, 2.
So let's look now at the other case where we have the imperfect multicollinearity. Imperfect multicollinearity. So that's what we explain now is just the consequences of uh, the case where we have um, perfect multicollinearity. With imperfect multicollinearity, the Euler system is still blue. Of course, if the other um, assumptions are, are valid, still valid, and then, but the problem here, the parameters will not be very uh, accurately estimated. And this might have some implication to the T ratios and the confidence interval as well. And if the multicollinearity is strong enough, this will result in having a bias toward failing to reject the null hypothesis uh, of beta, whatever J, equal uh, equal zero so how to detect for multicollinearity so now we understand the two cases where we have a uh, perfect multicollinearity or imperfect multicollinearity but now the question comes to the point of we need to know how to detect how to test for multicollinearity or first when do we know whether we have multicollinearity or not so one of the signs that you should if you see that you should suspect the presence of multicollinearity in is when you have a high r square so you have a high value for r square and in the same time well let me just remind you again, what is R squared? R squared, it explains the proportion of the variation in Y that is explained by the model. So if you have a very high R squared, that means that the model is or should be successful in explaining much of the variation of the dependent variable. But oh, saying that, that means the individual parameters, the individual coefficient, I should expect them to be significant. But if we have multicollinearity, then oh, a sign that you can look at or you can, when you see, you can uh, expect or suspect there is multicollinearity in the model is when you have R square and in the same time you have the individual coefficients are not significant. Um, there's no formal test to uh, to, to test for multicollinearity, but there are different ways you can informally test or uh, uh, check whether you have uh, multicollinearity in your model or not. So one, one, one way is to inspect the correlation coefficients for pairwise combination of the explanatory variable, see how, how correlated they are, or to run an auxiliary regression of each of the explanatory variables. Um, uh, on the other and then look at the uh, on the other explanatory variables and then um, look at the uh, uh, the R square um, or drop one of the va uh, variables that you think uh, they cause multicollinearity and then see whether the other variables became in the regression became significant or not so there are different ways uh, to to informally check or test whether you have uh, multicollinearity or not so how to remedy, how to correct for uh, imperfect multicollinearity? Then one way to deal with that, if you find out that there is one of the variables is, uh, is causing multicollinearity in the model, then you drop that variable, but uh, you should be uh, very careful to do that because you might uh, have another problem, which is the specification bias. It's a problem that we're going to uh, speak about, we're going to discuss in the next part of this lecture. But so far, let's just explain, uh, or very briefly explain what this means. If that variable was important to your model, that variable is important to explain the change in your dependent variable, and you omit that variable, you drop that variable, the impact of that variable will be uh, uh, will be uh, included in 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 the error term, which will will cause problems, and we we're gonna talk about that later. You could transfer the multicollinear variables. Uh, probably can have uh, different uh, like rather regression differences or lags or whatever. Or which actually more preferable if you can if. Uh, if you go back, if I take you back to the same example here, we know that this is perfect, um, perfectly uh, collinear because you've got only uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, data points. But if just imagine if we have 100 data points or 1,000 data points, so probably if that problem, 
only happen in like small portion here so it's not going to be a problem so the multicollinearity here it uh, if you increase the sample size might not be the case uh, or multicollinearity let me say in a different way let's say it's a sample specific problem so if you increase the sample size in some cases it might not be an issue at that uh, then so that so that's the case with multicollinearity. This is uh, what it means. What are the consequences? How to test for uh, um, multicollinearity? How to correct for uh, multicollinearity? Let's have uh, a look at this example here. So let's say we want to model the consumption expenditure y in relation to income x2 and wealth. Or oh, obviously, um, you might think well without even looking at the, the regression results, the income and wealth will be uh, correlated. But let's now assume that we don't know that, that we have X2 and X3. And let's have a look at uh, the uh, regression results we have here. So if uh, you look at the F statistic, we have a very high F statistic, so it means the model is very significant. Uh, if you look at the R square and the adjusted R square, we've got 96% 90, of the variations explained by the model, or 95. If you look at the adjusted R square, 95% is explained by the model. And in the same time, if you look at the individual coefficients here for X2 and X3, you will see if you're looking at that T ratio, you'll see it's very small, very low T ratio, which means these two variables are not significant. So x2 is not significant, or the 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 uh, the estimated coefficient. Here, if you look at beta two and beta three, so they are not significant. So we have a highly significant model, highly significant f uh, value, and the same time we have t values that are individually insignificant. This is the sign we talked about. In that case, or in this, in in a similar situation, you should suspect there is a problem with um multicollinearity so how to uh how to test or how to check whether there's a problem or not so one way to do that as we explained you can uh you could run a regression an auxiliary regression between uh let's say x2 on x3 or x3 uh, on x2 and then look at the uh, r square so in our example here so let's uh let's run x uh, regression of x3 and x2 and that's results you see 99 percent of the variation in x3 which is wealth is explained by uh, the change in x2 which is the income so that means they very uh they, they they're very uh, much correlated here so this is almost perfect collinear collinear together x2 and x3 so what to do in these situations one of the solutions what we're talking about now in this lecture is to drop one of those variables let's drop one of those variables and see what would happen or what will happen to uh, the results so let's now regress only uh, y on uh, only x so listen uh, x2 sorry so x2 here is income just to to uh, remind you see what happened now ask you is still very high 96 percent which is uh, is great but look now at the t ratio t ratio here let's just go back to t ratio and the first example when we ran the regression uh y in both variables x1 and x3 and because they are correlated now we found or we have it properly we had the problem of multicollinearity we had the individual uh t ratio here for x the the the, the one for x2 is um is, is is very small is very is very low but once we drop x3 from the model now it changed it became 14.24 and became significant which makes sense and even look at the sign of x2 the income here is positive which is something that you expect if you run an regression of consumption expenditure on income so you expect the positive a positive relationship between both variables and uh, very interestingly as well, if you look at the when we had the problem of multicollinearity, when we run the regression of both variables together, x2 and x3 uh, together, you will see the sign of wealth is negative, which might not make much sense because you would expect uh, I'm, I'm not sure maybe a positive sign. So let's let's try to run the regression of y and x3 only. Here we go. So we have um, results for. Um, 
uh, regressing y on x3 only and you'll see what happens to the sign we get the right sign the right that the sign that we would expect and the t ratio here is very high it jumped from uh let's go back minus 0 0.5 to uh 13.29 uh, and became very significant we still have the very um high value uh for um uh, R squared. So that was a very uh, uh, quick example to explain to you uh, like situation or to show you a situation where we uh, have um, multicollinearity and how to deal with that situation. So that explains to you what multicollinearity is, what are the consequences and how to detect, how to correct for um, multicollinearity when it exists and then uh, we, we we covered uh, this a very simple example uh, thank you for uh, following this uh, part of the lecture and I'll see you in the next part of the lecture